Okay, so, all right, polymers. So um, the two main types of polymers that we need to talk about, but it does go into a bit more detail afterwards. We have addition polymers, and we have, um, I forgot it for a minute, condensation, condensation polymers. And the process would be addition polymerization or condensation polymerization. Okay. Now, addition polymerization is fairly straightforward. It's usually done with alkenes, for example, ethene. Um, this is ethene. We know it's eth because it's got two carbons. We know it's ene because it's got a double bond. Now, what happens is the the alkene, uh, the double bond in the alkene breaks. So you have this. And because it breaks, um, these carbons now have a spare bond like that. Now you can have multiple ones of these. You can have, so we can just say that there are N lots of those um, starting molecules and they join together in a big long chain and we represent that by a little N there. Okay, does that sound familiar? Okay, now that is addition polymerization. Okay, that one's the easier one. It's simply break apart and then they join together like Lego bricks. Um, nice and easy. The condensation polymerization is a bit more complicated. Uh, we'll look at examples of that, but the main thing about condensation polymerization is that as, um, as well as it producing the polymer, it also produces another molecule. And the other molecule it usually produces is water. And that's why they call it condensation polymerization. Um, incidentally, the words to describe the building blocks of these polymers are called monomers. Um, so that's a monomer. And in this case, this monomer is ethene. So the name of the polymer is polyethene or polythene. So naming the, naming the polymers will be something they'll want you to do as well. Now let's look down and, oh, there we go. There's the example that I gave. So I will clear my drawings here. Um, yeah, so that's polythene. Polymerization of ethene molecules producing polythene. Okay, so we're probably going to be talking about a, um, that was addition polymerization. That's in that first one there. I'll add this to the database too. This page here. Um, sure. Right. So yeah, covalent bonding can be, okay, so it uses covalent bonds. Um, um, I won't bother going over that too much. I wanna go to focus on the harder stuff. Oh, wait a second. Oh, sorry. We're not in polymers anymore. Giant covalent structures. Right, okay. So, Here's an example question, um, not completely related to what we were just doing, but still in um, polymers. So carpets are made from wool, which is a natural polymer, and polypropene, um, or a mixture of both. Wool is less durable than polypropene. So it's first of all telling us that wool is less durable, which means that that's a disadvantage of using wool, right? And then we have to identify a disadvantage for using polypropene, uh, because if they both have disadvantages, then um, there's it would it would suggest there's a, a, a it makes sense to use a mixture of the two of them, uh, so you're offsetting both disadvantages. Um, and the the reason is to use both of them is that so the reason to use to not use wool is because you have to keep replacing the carpet. Um, the reason to not use poly pure polypropene is because polypropene is not a natural substance and it's man-made and so we would have to keep producing it and and that would use resources to produce it and and so if you do a mixture of the two then you don't have to produce quite as much polypropene and you also don't have to replace the carpet quite so much so it's a combination of the two is the is, is the is the way if we, have, if we have a look at that um let's 
what are all three marks? Uh, any three. So polypropylene comes from non-renewable source. Um, polypropylene requires a lot of energy to make. It's not biodegradable. Well, so you could have just said that, and you don't even have to say anything about the about the wool, which is surprising. So wool carpet will need to be replaced more often. Wool requires use of large areas of land. Okay, yeah, and the last one I didn't mention, but any three of those would have got the mark. All right. So, so it's possible then that condensation polymerization doesn't come up in AQA. Um, this does say it's AQA GCSE, but maybe it's not perfect because this is condensation polymerization. When you make uh, polyester, um, when two monomers join to make a, a, lose a small molecule, the small molecule is usually water, and in this case, it is water. In, in fact, I mean, you might want to check to see whether or not that whether or not you need to know that, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think you do because I think I taught someone who's the AQA science. Although I know that they're not covering, it, it's possible that it doesn't come up for you now because your school may not have taught it because we're doing internal assessments. Um, question 1D, um, polymer fibers are used to make the fabric used to make firefighter uniforms. Um, show you some of the, some of the properties. Evaluate the suitability of these polymers. So these are the two different polymers you could use. And evaluate the suitability of these polymers for firefighter uniforms. So what do you think? What kind of things do you think we'd want to be? Um, I mean, essentially, you've got to identify why each one is a good or bad um, point for for using in a, in a, a fire, uh, using as a firefighter's costume. Yeah, so if I circle the points that um, where they the, the material wins out, if we talk about melting point, we want it to be have a high melting point. We don't really want our um, clothes to melt against our skin. Not ideal. Um, and it's also a good flame uh, resistance. So what about the other two? Um, things here, the density and the water absorption. So density just means, um, well, the density is the amount of mass per volume. So if you're wearing a, if you're wearing a dense jumper, it's going to be heavy. Whereas if you wear a light, a less dense jumper, it's going to be lighter. So um, your clothes, if you said so these clothes are going, this is going to be heavier. So that would be a better situation. That would be better, you know, for, for density, polypropylene would be better. You'd rather it be lighter so as you could, you wouldn't get so exhausted and you'd be able to move more quickly, right? Um, water absorption, would you want the water absorption to be high or low? So I'd have thought I'd have think about this. If it was, and the disadvantage of it being high is that um, you're going to absorb a lot of water. People are going to be spraying water all over the place. As you absorb it, it's going to weigh down your clothes, and you're going to be moving less slowly, uh, more slowly. But the advantage of it absorbing a lot of water is that that adds to the flame resistance. If your clothes are soaking in water, they're not going to so easily set on a fire, are they? So. I think you could potentially say the water absorption is a neutral point. Um, and and the thing the thing is, we then need to look at each characteristic and think which is the most important one or which um, or which or put them in order of importance. I would say the most important is going to be the flame resistance, isn't it? This is kind of a, a deal breaker. So this means that we have to go with the polyester. We can't have a fire fighting costume that's got a poor flame resistance. That just seems crazy. So you can talk about the other characteristics, weigh them back and forth in your answer, and then talk about how water absorption could be good or bad. And then you've got to talk about how flame resistance is by far the most important. And so um, you would go with polyester for that reason. So let's see how close I got to what it said. Um, Simple statements like this is just a general way of how to market. Um, but what were the points that it wants? So, yeah, better flame resistance, 
Okay, so we said oh, absorbs water, so less likely to ignite. There we go. I said everything I said. That's quite good. Um, so absorbs water, so firefighter gets wet. Absorbs water, so uniform becomes heavy. High density, so uniform is heavy. Um, so, I mean, yeah, clear comparison made. Essentially, if you said it in the way that I was just describing, I think you would get, that would definitely get four marks. Okay. Let's just stop that video there then.